Black holes have the power to destroy everything. But can they also break everything? To find out, let's build a tiny black hole in the Kurzgesagt labs that is about the mass of our moon and try to blow it up. Experiment 1. Big booms break things. So let's blow up the entire nuclear arsenal of the world around our black hole. Hello and welcome to Z. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Black holes swallow whatever crosses their event horizon, both matter and energy, and since E equals mc squared, all the energy that enters a black hole increases its mass. Since the mass of a black hole is proportionate to its size, the more we nuke, the bigger and more massive the black hole becomes. Experiment 2. Antimatter and antimatter annihilate each other. Unfortunately, an object, whether made of matter or antimatter, will completely erase its previous identity once it enters a black hole. Black holes are only concerned with gravity, which is dependent on the object's total mass energy. Since a particle's mass is equal to that of its corresponding antiparticle, throwing an antimoon has the same effect as throwing a moon. The black hole just becomes more massive. The ability of black holes to erase information is quite intriguing because it implies that, despite their size and strength, black holes are comparable to elementary particles. For instance, only three numbers can accurately describe the incredibly simple electron. Amazingly, the same is true for black holes, too. Although they are messy, they can rotate and carry an electric charge, and once a black hole arises, it doesn't matter if it originates from a banana, an anti-star, or a collapsed star. Those three digits will always adequately define it. If a black hole is essentially just an odd particle, could we potentially use an anti-black hole to destroy it? Third experiment. Anti-black hole how exciting is a particle that has the opposite charge but the same mass as its equivalent antiparticle? Since a black hole has mass and an electric charge, its anti-black hole should also have weight and an electric charge. However, if we cause them to collide, the charge will simply build up and cancel out, leaving us with a new black hole that is twice as massive but devoid of charge. This means that we need to stretch our imaginations. The fourth hardest physics experiment destroys the event horizon. Although a black hole is capable of carrying spills and charges, even these strange objects have their limits. If a black hole's charge or spin increases too much, strange things will happen. To put it simply, we think of black holes as hiding a singularity inside an infinitely compressed mass with such strong gravity that nothing can escape from it, not even light. This explains why a black hole appears to be a black sphere of nothingness. The event horizon will dissolve. The event horizon is the outer edge of this ultimate prism. If you cross it, you'll never be able to return. However, when a black hole rotates, it acts somewhat like a spinning washing machine. It seems as though the rotation wants to repel and push out nearby objects, but because of the black hole's strong gravity, this effect doesn't work and the event horizon disappears. Similarly, if the electric charge becomes too large, our ironclad jail will burst open if we manage to destroy the event horizon. The singularity would still be there, and objects would still naturally fall towards it. If you hit it, you would still die horribly and quickly, but the vicinity of the singularity won't be an inescapable prison anymore. You could get as close as you want and come back. This should count as destroying the black hole. Can we do it? Experiment 5. Overfeeding. All we have to do is overcharge or overspin the black hole. We could do this by throwing objects with a small mass and a lot of charge or angular momentum so that the charge or spin increases faster than the mass. We have to overfeed the black hole until it reaches the point where it breaks open. However, whether you can actually do this is the subject of passionate arguments among physicists. Charged black hole equal charges repel each other, and the more of the same charges you squish together the more they push back. So let's say that we have a negatively charged black hole, and we want to overfeed it with electrons for example whose charge is far larger than its mass the electrons will feel an electrostatic repulsion, and the war electrons we throw the larger the negative charge of the black hole will be, and the stronger the repulsion. But once we reach the upper limit the electrostatic repulsion will be so strong that it won't allow any more electrons to come in at this point the black hole will refuse to be over fat with the spin it's similar, 
Once the black hole reaches its upper limit it won't gobble more spin, but some scientists have discovered what looks like a loophole if, in an instant, before the black hole reaches the limit, we throw the right amount of matter in just the right way. It looks like we could actually overfeed it. Most scientists are skeptical, but let's give it a try anyway. In the inbreaking physics, there is a catch, though. The event horizon of a black hole hides. If the singularity destroys the horizon, it leaves us with an exposed singularity that lacks the event horizon shielding. Contrary to popular perception, there is a big, filthy truth about black holes that could signal the end of physics as we know it. A black hole singularity is really not at its center. Rather, it occurs in the future for anyone who crosses its horizon. Black holes distort the cosmos to such an extent that, once you cross the event horizon, space and time reverse positions. The singularity is actually in your future, not in front of you. And just as you cannot see your own future, you will not see the singularity until you hit it. However, you cannot hit anything that is in your future and experience it in any way, such as when your next birthday occurs. This is why falling toward the center means moving towards the future, making it impossible for you to stop your fall and turn back. The main point is that there is no way to know. A singularity is a region of infinite gravity and gravity is the bending of space-time at a singularity. The bending is so radical that space and time literally break, making it impossible to predict anything because predicting entails making a forecast about where and when something will happen, but where and when have lost their meaning. So we have an unpredictable thing with infinite gravity and, therefore, infinite energy, which means that anything could come out of it for no reason at all. Singularities in the future are not a problem because we cannot see or interact with them. We believe that singularities should exist in nature because we can demonstrate that gravitational collapse leads to the formation of singularities under very general conditions. However, scientists believe that nature prohibits the formation of naked singularities because something forces the creation of an event horizon around them to prevent their insanity from spreading to the rest of the universe without event horizons. Without causality, physics as we know it would break down. Despite the portrayal of black holes as the ultimate monsters of the universe, physics may not make any sense at all. Therefore, rather than acting as the villains shielding us from the insanity of singularities, let's choose a safer path. If we destroy the horizon, we may violate the fundamental laws of the universe. To the best of our knowledge, there is only one safe way to annihilate a black hole. All black holes are subject to a process known as Hawking radiation, which causes them to gradually lose mass until they evaporate and leave no trace of a naked singularity or horizon. The time it takes for our small black hole, which is the size of a speck of dust, to evaporate solely depends on its mass. It will take roughly 10 to the power of 44 years. Is it feasible to destroy a black hole? A black hole is 10 billion trillion trillion times older than the cosmos is today. Yes, we must wait, but you don't have to wait that long. If you have the knowledge to understand them, there are many fascinating things to explore right now on this planet. To help you with that, we've developed a series of lessons to advance your scientific knowledge, produced in partnership with Brilliant.org. These courses help you gain a deeper knowledge of the subjects covered in our most watched films, which range from supernovas and climate science to rabies and mammalian metabolism. In a class on the subject, you might even learn about the basic ideas underlying the behavior and life cycle of black holes. Brilliant is the best approach to understanding fundamental concepts in math, science, computer science, and other subjects. Simply specify your goals and Brilliant will devise the ideal route and provide you with the resources you need to achieve them. With thousands of lessons to choose from, each interactive like a one-on-one -on -one Kotzgazard video, Brilliant's latest course, Exploring Data Visually, will teach you everything you need to start your journey in data science without requiring you to know how to code. You'll analyze real data sets, like one about Starbucks, and gain the ability to draw your own conclusions in an information-rich world. Data skills are becoming increasingly important in almost every field, and Brilliant is the ideal place to start learning them. With CutsArt classes, you can engage in hands-on learning and discover everything Brilliant has to offer. To begin your free 30-day trial, register at Brilliant.org. We love watching how the cogs work together, and our research brilliantly equips you with the skills to see how everything fits together. As an added bonus, 
The first 200 users of the link will receive $20 off an annual membership when their trial ends. Regards.